Hi, I'm Alceu Bisotto and I'm going to present our work called GAN-based Data Augmentation and Anonymization for Skin Lesion Analysis, a Critical Review. This work was done by me, Eduardo Valle and Sandra Avila. I will start with an explanation of what is GAN-based Data Augmentation. And it is a method to mitigate the lack of data. Usually, the traditional pipeline is, we feed a CNN, for example, with a dataset, and it needs to learn predictive features to be able to predict the class of new samples. For GAN-based augmentation, the idea is that this dataset will also feed a GAN that is responsible to learn the data distribution and provide the CNN with other useful data points that will make it easier to learn good features. When we start this research, we wanted to assess the impact of two years of GAN advancement for skin lesion analysis, complementing our work from 2018. Our preliminary experiments did not reliably improve performance, and because of this we started wondering what were we doing wrong? To try to find the answers, we performed a systematic literature review on GAN-based data augmentation focused on the medical context. Through this review, we find some methodological problems we want to avoid, and I will go through some of them here. First problem is about choosing hyperparameters directly on a test set. And this happens, for example, if you use your again augmented models predictions over the test set and make use of such results to take decisions on hyperparameters. This, of course, uses privileged information and should always be avoided. Another problem is when the augmented models, which are often the main proposal of the work, are more thoroughly optimized compared to its baselines. This creates weak baselines and may suggest wrong directions for future research. Examples of this would be training augmented models for more time or for a fixed number of epochs without using early stopping to monitor the validation metrics, what would enable to compare all models at their peak performance. Often, the proposed augmented models are further investigated, its problems are diagnosed, a new set of hyperparameter or better craft data augmentation is used, and with this, they get better and better. The baseline, on the other hand, is not given as much chance to perform. When we do all this process, uh, it's not clear where the improvement of performance comes from. If it is from the GAN being added in the pipeline, or if it is from all these other optimizations that were done. The next problem that is also very important is ignoring performance fluctuations. This can be easily avoided by running experiments for 3, 5, or 10 times and reporting the average and standard deviation of the performances. Finally, we noticed a variety of ratios between real and synthetic images used, and also of sampling method, that is, deciding which of the generated images are going to be used to augment the training set. Notice that when using a noise-based GAN, it can generate an unlimited amount of samples, giving us different choices regarding to sampling the synthetic images. However, there is no systematic evaluation of such factors, which made us wonder about their impact on GAN-based augmentation. Through our literature review, our work evolved to a critical analysis of GAN-based augmentation, using skin lesion classification as the target problem. Here we try to make use of the best practices when training computer vision models, avoiding the mistakes that we just described. In the medical context especially, respecting patients' privacy is very important and it can be troublesome for researchers and institutions to share the data collected over the years. At the same time, this data is crucial to boost machine learning methods. A possible solution is to insert again in the pipeline and make the synthetic images replace the real ones. So, in this work, we consider two different ways of including the GAN in the traditional classification pipeline. The first one, in the left, is the augmentation, where the objective is to improve performance of the classifier and the same dataset feeds both GAN and CNN. The second one, in the right, is what we call anonymization, where the GAN has access to exclusive data. Since this data never reaches whoever is training this classifier, it can be considered anonymized. 
we investigate the use of different GANs, both translation and noise-based. For translation, we have Pix2Pix HD and SPADE. In those methods, images are created based on semantic maps that carry information of the real images. Despite being able to generate very realistic samples, these methods are limited by the amounts of images they can generate, because they depend on real images to provide the input maps. For noise-based, we have progressive GAN and style GAN, and these can generate unlimited amount of samples, since they only receive noise sampled from some noise distribution as input. We also evaluate different sampling methods. In the literature, the one that is the most used is random, where you just randomly pick the samples you're going to use. This is also the one used when the GANs are used to generate exactly the necessary amount of images. The next two methods, best and worst, they are based on CNN scores. So we use a separate CNN to produce scores for our synthetic images, and with that we can choose the ones with the highest scores, which we call best, and the ones with the lowest scores, which we call worst. Best present features that agree with the ones learned by the CNN, while the worst ones may rely on different features or even be the result of a mistake of the generative process. The last one is the diverse method, where we remove near duplicates based on a perceptual hash. This leaves us with images that are more visually different or more diversified in our synthetic dataset. We also study using different ratios of real and synthetic images. Here we have a representation of the augmented dataset. In the left, we have the real part, and in the right, the synthetic part, both already divided in benign and malignant. In most of our experiments, we add synthetic images without changing the class balancement of the dataset. In this case, for example, for every two real benign lesions, we add one synthetic benign. The same repeats for malignants. However, due to the unbalanced nature of our data, we try to increase the proportion of malignant. In this case, for example, for every malignant in the real dataset, we add one synthetic malignant. For benigns, however, we only use one synthetic every two real ones. To evaluate and analyze the factors I've shown, we carefully design our experiments to consider all networks involved at their best performance, and these include the generative models. We select the GAN checkpoint used to generate the images based on time spent on training and the FID score. This is important because it directly influences the quality of the synthetic images we use. We also perform early stopping based on the validation loss, allowing each model to be at its peak of performance at the time of evaluation. We apply conventional data augmentation to all our classifiers, both during training and test, since this can mitigate some fluctuations and also make our baseline stronger. To have a more reliable result, we evaluate our models in five different datasets of in and out of distribution data to evaluate how generalizable our training models are. Finally, for statistical significance, we run each of our experiments 10 times. Next, we present our results. They show that the GAN-based augmentation and anonymization success depend partly on the test set. For in-distribution dermoscopic test sets, none of our experiments showed reliable improvements. On the other hand, for the DERM7PT clinical out-of-distribution test, both procedures prove to be effective to, bo to boost performance. First, we're going to go through the augmentation results. Each plot shows the performance in a different dataset, identified at the top left corner. The y-axis contains the different experiments we tried. In each group of experiments, identified here by alternating colors, we evaluate the impact of a discussed factor. The first group used different GANs to provide the synthetic images. The second modified the dataset class balancement. 
Next, we have the different sampling methods. And finally, changing the ratio of real and synthetics. The x-axis show the AUC performance in the melanoma versus benign task. The baseline, which considers the case where do not, we do not use synthetics during training, is represented by the 1-0 label, and we trace a line using its mean to make the comparison easier. Considering the average, None of the experiments using ISIC-19 or ISIC-20 as test set provided reliable performance improvements. However, when evaluating out-of-distribution clinical images of DERM7PT, most of the experiments showed a considerable boost, with most experiments above the baseline trace. For anonymization, the Y labels now show different ratios of reals and synthetics, where we progressively use less and less real images. For each group, we consider a baseline that makes no use of synthetics, an experiment where we double the amount of synthetics, and the last one where we fill the training set to its original size using synthetics. We emphasize that GAN-based anonymization is only useful if at least the group baseline is suppressed. We also include an upper bound where the classification network have access to the full dataset. Again, for in-distribution test sets, the inclusion of synthetics to the training set did not benefit the model's performances. All the experiments fail to surpass their baseline that do not make use of synthetics. Here, the test set composed of the clinical images from DERM7PT were again an exception, showing three experiments above the baseline and even one slightly above the expected upper bound. The takeaway from this presentation is to be cautious about evaluation protocols. Through the flaws identified during our systematic literature review and our experiments, we hope you were able to show the importance of careful design and evaluation protocols. GANs excel when they are used in combination with expert domain knowledge and can transform and aggregate information that was otherwise overlooked. Better characterizing such scenarios can lead to more powerful and generalizable classification models. I hope you find our research interesting and I invite you to check our paper and code. Thank you.